We want to shamelessly promote you so you don't have to shamelessly promote yourselves. You can do that, of course. But uh, we'll, we'll, we'll help you out with that, too. Um, Meetup, newsletter. Is there anything else? Also, um, and yes, stay tuned to our social media because um, members of the Calgary Game Developers Association were recipients of the Digital Alberta Ember Awards. So we are going to highlight those awesome winners and their accomplishments because um, we are a bunch of cool, creative. I really like cool and creative, and I also like alliteration. But um, there are some fantastic winners, and uh, we just want to amplify them. And congratulations to all the Ember Award winners, um, because they are doing their part to ensure that Alberta is not just known as a resource province and an oil, oil town, quote-unquote. Like, we're doing some awesome, entertaining things that are just... Yeah, we're we're doing our part to put game development in the province of Alberta and the city of Calgary on the map. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for those those updates. So, without further ado, we will introduce this evening's speakers and scene. Awesome. Oh, do, do we want to go with the introductions first and then we, we jump into the presentation? Sure. Okay. So just, I, I, I'm just going to start. My name is Christian Jacob. I'm the a professor at the University of Calgary in the Department of Computer Science. I'm also the, the head of the department for the last four years. And uh, as part of that, it's my, my pleasure to really work on, on new programs. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about, about other programs. Um, and uh, I'm really, I, I myself have been interested in gaming over the last probably five years or so. And before that, I've been building uh, something called the Lindsay Virtual Human Project. Um, so we all, when we discovered game engines like Unity and Unreal Engine, I got really excited because I'm building these 3D models, right? So kind of walkable, um, walk inside the human body like the magic school bus kind of thing. And uh, so these game engines have opened up a whole new world for me. So I'm not, not really a gamer, but I'm using these game engines as as simulation tools and presentation tools and engagement tools. And that, that's what, what gets me excited. Owen, over to you. Uh, thank you, uh, Christian. And so my name is Owen Brierley. I am currently a uh, uh, PhD candidate in the Computational Media Design Program uh, at the UFC. I've been uh, in the program officially for uh, this. Uh, I've entered my third year. Uh, and I started in the master's program a year before that uh, and then transferred over. Um, for those of you who don't know me, prior my, my previous life, before becoming a, a late blooming academic, uh, I was um, the executive director of the Edmonton Digital Arts College, 
for a decade. Um, and so I ran a nerd finishing school uh, where we had a game design program, we had an animation program, uh, we had a graphic design program and an illustration program, all of which were um, diploma programs uh, that gave you uh, about two years of, of uh, learning in uh, about 10 months. And we were able to actually calculate the number of academic credit hours. Mm -hmm. And we were we were on par with uh, programs like what uh, McEwen would offer for their, their, their diplomas. And so uh, my world is in game design research and, uh, and I work uh, in Unreal. Uh, I work in Unity um, and I work with a whole bunch of people who are way smarter than I am and uh, amazingly uh, brilliant at what they do. Um, and one of those people that I get to work with uh, is Christian. I, I work with him in, in his uh, Lindsay Virtual Human Lab. And the other person that I have the privilege of, of working with is uh, Richard Zhao. Uh, and he's uh, recently joined the UFC um, from Penn State University. So over to you, Richard. Thanks, Oliver. <laughs> hey, everybody. So I'm Richard, and um, it's great to be here, and it's great to talk to all of you. Uh, so I am an assistant professor at the U of C. I actually uh, did my grad school at the uh, University of Alberta. So, and um, I work on games. Uh, for my uh, grad school, I basically worked on uh, implementing AI uh, in, in games to make uh, games more engaging. And here at the U of C, I'm still working on games. Uh, my research mainly focuses on um, uh, serious games. So, you know, uh, using games for the purpose of training and education. And uh, uh, it's so exciting to be here to talk to you about our new initiative, which is our graduate program in game production. From one to, 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 to the other. Um, so j just just as a, as a little bit of an overview, uh, I'm just going to give you an, an, an introduction of, of, of where we are coming from. Um, and then we go into the different levels of the, of the programs that we can, uh, that we, we, we are talking about. So it's not only a course, but a whole, whole one year program, as you will see. And uh, it's, it's very, very focused on mentorship. Uh, based learning. Uh, so that's also where you come in. So then we, we talk a little bit about how we integrate people from what we call industry, right? So people outside, you know, from, from our community and, and make them partners in, in our, in our teaching and learning. And we can then do a little bit of an outlook of where we think this might go sort of um, a year, two years, three years down the road. And then of course have a lot of uh, time for Q and A because I hope we are going to get some some feedback from you about, about what we are planning to do. So um, as an academic, one always kind of thinks about the ivory tower. Uh, and I was thinking about, OK, are we, uh, um, am I still sitting in an ivory tower? And what kind of towers do we actually have at the University of Calgary? And the largest tower still is our so-called uh, McKimmy a uh, library tower, as it was called before, which is now actually the McKimmy complex, because they basically um, um, re refurbished the, the whole uh, old library tower. And now we have uh, central IT in there and administration. And uh, But to the side of it is the uh, Hunter Hub for Entrepreneurial Thinking, which is currently being being planned. And actually, in, in under construction, and this is sort of a sort of a rendering. So the tower is finished. People have moved in there. It's a net zero, zero building. And um, to to the right is this hub for entrepreneurial thinking. And I wanted to show you this because it actually uh, also demonstrates that uh, at the UFC we actually don't have ivory towers on anymore. On the contrary, uh, we actually have now written the, on our flag. Of the university that we are the youngest entrepreneurial university to really really embrace uh, reaching out to the communities getting industry involved uh, so the real world right and, and sort of bringing this work integrated learning aspect into our courses so that students are actually prepared for for the jobs out there and not just you know, studying something that's 
that's disconnected from from the real world. So the actual actual library uh, that was that was moved out of this old library tower is now in this digital or has been for for quite a while now in this um, a a Taylor family digital library, and it's called a digital library because it actually mostly it has almost no books. Uh, books are actually shipped in from a from the uh, central storage, uh, but it's filled with uh, with interactions. Um, and it has a, a cafe in there and a, a coffee coffee shop and lots of you know, computers for for students to uh, to work with. But mostly mostly um, uh, connection spaces, right? So kind of people can book rooms or, or sit in, in lounge areas and really really work with uh, with each other and sort of cross pollinate and uh, across disciplines. And uh, so that's uh, that's our our sort of flagship on campus. It's right in the, in the middle of the campus. I don't know whether some of you have been there recently. It's uh, almost seems like now during COVID times, times some of us from, from my colleagues say, oh, I just came to the campus and there was a new building. Ooh. And this is actually one that is currently under construction. Like this, is, this is part of this uh, um, uh, Hunter Hub for Entrepreneurial Thinking. And as you can see, the design is, is pretty open. So on the right, you see actually the, the there's, I think I took this picture in January, beginning of January. So it's it's almost, um, but it's get, getting there, uh, and uh, will be a you know, nice nice glass building for people to really interact. So uh, we hope that that part of that program will also be finding a home in in this building, uh, because it's made for making all these connections and and uh, being a hub for for these uh, professional programs. So talking about professional programs they are actually helping us to build these these learning communities so when you go to cpsc.ukagu.ca you actually land on our computer science homepage, and when you just scroll down a little bit you see all the programs that we offer and as part of those we have these what we call professional graduate programs and they they are relatively new so we've started them originally about uh, three four years ago with a data science uh, professional program and the original idea really was to look at you no know, typical oil and gas engineers. Uh, now they, they have to find a different, different industry to work in, but they have, of course, skills. Uh, so how can, how can we uh, cross-skill them or upskill them? And now basically look at the you know, data as the new oil. Uh, that, that was the original idea. So we started this data science professional program, and which is a one-year program. You'll, you'll hear more from from Richard and Owen about how it's actually structured. But the, the real idea is that you have already an undergraduate degree and then you, you basically spend a year or also stackable, so over you know, three three different stacks, uh, spend um, get get into these programs. And not, not going to go into the details, I just wanted to to basically uh, outline that it's part of the you know, the new approach, new scholarship in at the University of Calgary, where we offer these these different programs in addition to our undergrad program, which is still sort of a, a four-year commitment, and that, that's good because you really want to get, get deep into, into specific areas like computer science, but then also have these you know, from, from micro what we call micro-credentials to these certificate diploma master's programs. And this is just, just one example uh, that we are doing. It's going to be our third one from, uh, from computer science. And uh, so Richard, I think, is going to tell you a bit more about it, how it's actually going to look like. All right, so this diagram you're seeing here is an overview of our game production program. It has three components. So it, there is a certificate, a diploma, as well as a master's degree. Uh, these are meant to be programs at the graduate level. So essentially, they're open to applicants with, uh, with an undergraduate degree. Uh, the reason we are doing this is uh, because Calgary has a lot of potential for the game industry. Now, we have a lot of talented individuals who have uh, skills either in computer coding or in creating arts or in running a business, but they may not have necessarily have the knowledge of, of taking those skills and apply them to the game industry. So what we are seeing here is that we are providing um, these talented individuals a pathway into the game industry by essentially uh, telling them how they can apply their skills to effectively in the game industry. So 
as part of this uh, professional program, there are multiple pathways. Uh, so, you know, the certificate is an entry point. And then they can, after the certificate, they can move on to the diploma. After the diploma, they can move on to the master's degree. So essentially that provides mm -hmm. ongoing professional development over a period of time. And this is important because uh, um, a, a lot of people are already working or they have other commitments. They may not be able to commit full time to this program. So we want to provide the flexibility for people to be able to complete this program uh, while uh, working on something else. The master's degree here is an actual master's degree, right? So it is what we call a professional master's degree in that it's combining the, um, the value of an academic scholarship with the power of the industry because really we want this program to be able to train people who are ready for the games industry. Next slide, please. Thank you. So the three parts of this program uh, are the certificate, the diploma, and then the master's degree. The certificate is the first part. So uh, there are four courses you take as part of the certificate. If you do this program full time, that will just be the first four months. Uh, so the first four courses are programming in a game engine, story and design, uh, media, so that's art, as well as business practice. We can see that for uh, game development, you really have to understand all these different areas in order for a uh, game studio to be successful. Craig is, uh, has, has company. <laughs> ah, <laughs> sorry about that, Richard. <laughs> That's all right. One of the things that okay. uh, I can just add into this, uh, Richard, is, is one of the things that we are doing with this program is, is ensuring that all of the courses are integrated with one another. So you're not studying uh, programming in an engine on its own. It is in context with story and design, media content, business practice. So so all of the, the courses are intertwined with each other in ways that, um, that you, you wouldn't necessarily just take one on its own. Um, in a in a discrete spot, it, it, there is a, a need to uh, to to work almost holistically with with all these courses. Sorry about that, Richard. No, it's great. That's a, a good comment there. So we really want students to understand all the aspects of um, uh, game development, so that uh, after completing a certificate, they have an understanding of how the industry actually works. And the next part of the program, if they wish to continue from the certificate, is a diploma. That is another four months on top of the uh, certificate, where we get students to really um, focus on a specific area, a specific role that they will want to do in the industry. So in this case, there will be a set of courses that the students can pick so they will need to pick three courses from a set of courses that we offer here. Essentially, uh, tailor the skills to a specific role, right? So if you want to be a game programmer, then you want to take courses that are more programming oriented. If you want to be a game artist, then you want to take courses that are more arts oriented, etc. So after they have their focus, there will be a capstone course to finish everything off. So we really want everybody coming off the diploma program to get together in a group as what you will be doing in the industry. You'll be working with uh, different people. So, you know, a programmer will be working with an artist, will be working with a designer, will be working with a, a, a manager of a group. And then you will all be working on some game together within that environment. So we really want this experience to essentially uh, to mimic what the uh, industry is like and we really want to prepare these students for the industry. Okay, next slide, please. All right, so the last part of uh, this program, should students wish to continue after getting a diploma, is our master's degree. We call it the Master of Game Production. So that is 
another four months on top of the diploma. So that would be 12 months in total to get your master's degree if you work full time on this. And the third semester is devoted to the integration uh, of the of learner with the direct game industry work experience. Right. So this is what we call the work integrated learning, where the students will be working with industry partners, uh, industry mentors on a project that is determined uh, with the industry mentor. So there are some options the student can take. They can work in what's called an industry internship. So you know that would be like a, what you would expect in an internship where you work for uh, an industry mentor. Uh, or you can choose to have an entrepreneurship experience. So um, in this past, we are really getting our students to be ready for, to be an entrepreneur in the game industry, you know, starting their own studio. How would you um, set up a studio and manage a studio on your own with uh, perhaps a few people? And we want to get them ready for that, right? So essentially, all these work experience are getting students ready for the industry, whether they you know, go work for a larger game studio or create a, create a game studio themselves, right? So, and then we want all these work experience to be mentored by one of our faculty members here. And then we want uh, industry veterans, so uh, professionals already in this industry to provide feedback along the way. And that essentially uh, completes the entire uh, master's program. Uh, so here, as you can see, with a certificate, we get them started with all the areas of game dev. With the diploma, we get them to specialize in the area they want to work in. And then the master's provides them with that industry experience. Awesome. Shall I take over? Yes, please. Thanks, Richard. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the, uh, the sort of the philosophical approach that we took to uh, designing this program, um, because one of the big things that we wanted to ensure at the outset was, are we modeling uh, best practices when it comes to the game design industry? Um, and are we, uh, are we behaving way in ways in the classroom that uh, resemble what a game studio work ethic, a game studio uh, collaborative effort, uh, a game studio um, autonomous work ethic looks like. And, uh, and so how do we help students come from an undergrad experience and transition them into a, uh, a space where they can become contributing members to uh, a, a team uh, and in particular uh, a game uh, industry team because we know as we all know that games are a, a unique beast when it comes to not just what you do but how you do it and so um, we we looked at things like uh, the the nature of, of mentorship and and how um, every learner coming into the program is going to have a unique skill set, a unique uh, set of, of um, knowledge, and and we need to help them understand how they can transition what they now know into what they can use when they enter the industry. And so when you look at the certificate and the diploma and the master's programs on their own, we, we specifically looked at how can we turn the certificate, if all you do is the certificate, where does that get you? Like, what, what, are, you, what, what, what are you ready when you finish a, the certificate? And so we, we thought, well, okay, let's look at sort of entry level, uh, you know, super junior kind of stepping in, uh, perhaps a QA position or, you know, a, 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 a technical artist QA or, or those sorts of roles. Someone who's ready, who's got, again, who's got some background, maybe, maybe has some uh, experience in uh, their area, but not a lot of uh, boots on the ground type of stuff. Then you move on to the diploma, and the diploma starts to introduce uh, more team-oriented uh, work and as well some leadership components. So by the time you finish your diploma, our intention is that you will, will be able to step into a team lead role. 
you may not have all the experience behind you, but you'll have the the, the knowledge you need to move quickly from a junior role to a, a team lead role, if that's your your desire and your 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 goal. And then finally, in the um, in the masters, we're kind of looking at the uh, the the uh, executive leadership role, and and uh, you know how do you um, how do you take a take on uh, w working with a, a number of, of different teams and organizing and managing all of that. Um, and, and the only way you get there, again, is by being part of the teams and then understanding how the, those teams integrate with the other teams on, on, in the company, in the studio. So when we look at, at our learning model, um, a lot of the, the, the work that we're doing is um, what we've referred to as, as ask or uh, looking at um, attitude, skills, and knowledge. And through mentorship, we work individually with the students to assess where you at today, where do you need to be to get into the industry, and how can we help you get there? Uh, and a, a big part of that as well is the uh, contextual learning. So uh, being able to take, not just getting everybody to do the same thing, uh, you know, we're all gonna do the same project together. Um, rather, it may be that we, we divvy up work and, uh, and uh, student A will, will be focused on modeling and uh, student B will be focused on uh, AI blueprints uh, and building out behavior trees. Uh, and what that does is it starts to build a, a level of autonomy on the individual's learning and it starts them getting thinking about, well, what is it that I need to do in terms of my ongoing professional development and my, my, uh, my adaptability and my, my ability to be, um, uh, as uh, Derek referred to it from Key Software, he said, we're looking for agility and not agile from that. Yes, agile and scrum and all that is fantastic, but the agility of the brain, of the mind, and and a, a lot of that comes with a, a sort of a well-developed practice of uh, what, what is called just-in-time learning. We all know what that means, right? You, you, you hit a, uh, a situation, you got to figure something out, you got a day to do it, and you're going to take what you know and maybe a little bit of what you're learning, and you're going to have to implement that and make it happen. That's, that's the iterative nature of, of game development. Um, and at the same time, there's that, um, the project that never ends problem. So how do you, how do you continue to grow and develop and, and, and build your knowledge? At the same time, how do you actually deliver, right? And so it's, it, for, for us, it's not just gonna be about, um, hey, learn and learn and learn and keep learning and never get anything done. Uh, it's going to also be about let's hit those deliverables in the, the time frame that we have available to us. In, on the previous slide, you saw there's a one month frame for the capstone project. We're going to have to scope that project for a one month turnaround and understand that the, the students are going to be starting from whatever place they start from. And they need to know how far they can get in a month and that what they can be expected to deliver on a, in, in a month. I remember when I was in school and so many of my students would often, you know, they'd be like kids in a candy store with, uh, you know, Whoa, we got to do a project. So they pile in all of the possible features they could possibly think of and, uh, and then get a quarter of the way into it and go, hmm, this is really hard. So, uh, so that's a big part of, of what we're looking at in terms of our um, ongoing uh, mentorship and, and the ongoing relationship that we have with each learner in, in the course. As well, when we get into the, 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 the masters and the, the, um, uh, the, uh, the internship component, we don't stop the mentorship. So oftentimes you'll find that with internships, it's sort of like, okay, congratulations, you're an intern now, way you go, good luck. Um, in our case, we're, we're working with industry partners to say, how do we make sure that there's, uh, uh, the student A is learning from this experience because they're paying tuition? And B, how is the company getting something out of this internship? And C, how can we improve the program uh, in terms of being able to prepare students for these internships 
And and how good are we at kind of the matchmaking and finding uh, the the appropriate fit for the learners who are coming through the program? And and you know it's it might be that the, the person has all the skills and knowledge, but they they're just not the right cultural fit, right? Everybody likes to work at night in this one company, and this person's a morning person, or something other than that. This is a super simplistic example, but you, you kind of get where, where, where I'm headed with it, is, is there's so many variables at play when it comes to the fit of an intern in a company that, you know, uh, there's, by the end of a year, we're going to know these people fairly well. And rather than kind of just sending them into the wild and saying, you know, good luck and, and do an interview to the best of your ability, we want to build that relationship and then continue to uh, allow that, uh, that experience to inform our practice and inform our work as teachers and, and mentors. So there you go. That's a little bit about our, uh, our, our, our learning model going to move on to industry integration. And, uh, and at this point, you, you, Richard and I will, will kind of jam on this slide. Um, the industry integration is built into every aspect of what we do, including the, um, the certificate program has uh, game jam like uh, events in it. We're, we're integrating uh, the industry into the capstone projects where they will be giving feedback to our students. The masters, of course, that's obvious that it's going to be industry uh, partners that will be uh, working with us on those internships. Uh, and then there's also, you know, we've, we've got these special topics that are uh, that kind of are a bit of an open door that allow us to do things that uh, we didn't think of. You know, because we can't, we're not thinking of everything, and we want to continue to grow and, and evolve. And so, those these special topics allow us to to look to the industry and say, so what should we be doing next? How do we stay ahead of the the curve on this? And and how can we how can we make sure that our students are entering the 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 space with that thing that you may be you know is your biggest pain point? Um, and and so if the, if we can offer that, that becomes a real cool value add. And, uh, and it may be that in a special topic, it might, it, it'll be a thing that we do once uh, and we have to adapt and do something a little different the next year or, or that sort of thing. I remember um, uh, it, it was uh, Lloyd from uh, Red Iron Labs. He mentioned that at a VDAC because one of the things we did was we focused on uh, mobile games. And because they do so much VR work, the, the 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 mobile games mindset for optimized models and and uh, and those sorts of things fit really nicely in the VR side of, of production. So uh, our grads were were suited to that. Um, and if we had sort of if we hadn't been able to be live and kind of adapt to to what was was going on in the industry, we might have been stuck with having to do what we had done the year before or the year before that. And, uh, and so this is, you know, try, one of the big things that have, has been in discussion with Richard Krishna and I on, on an ongoing basis is, is what are the strategies we need to use to continually stay uh, up to speed with the industry? We don't want to become calcified. We don't want to get, lose momentum. And so uh, out of the gate, we're, we're looking to make sure that we're adapting and, and moving with the industry as it grows. Uh, other thoughts on, on the industry integration, Richard? Um, well, you've said a lot about it. It's really <laughs> great. <laughs> right? So again, cool. you know, we really want this we want, we want this to be a program that prepares uh, our students for the industry. And we want industry involvement every step of the way. So, you know, uh, they, they come in uh, to, you know, to our lectures, to give student advice, and they are part of uh, the, the internships, of course. And they're just involved uh, in every step of the way. I think that's a good thing for our students to have. Awesome. So on to future work, Christian. So, so this is as you as you might imagine. This is a this is a really interesting experiment we are trying to do, an experiment 
of of um, of exploration from a university perspective because um, as you probably know things can be quite siloed within within the university environment but this is this is changing and uh, so now we we are looking really into more what we call transdisciplinary learning right so really reaching across faculties different domains and as as richard and and, uh, and owen just explain it and of course you know that that you you integrate when you when you build a game you integrate many many different skills many many different backgrounds from people uh, people with with very different expertise and that's what we want to also emulate right so in the program which we haven't mentioned yet is we actually have uh, colleagues from the Haskins School of Business involved to help us with the with the business aspects right but then also focusing on on, 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 on the game perspective. We have people from the English department involved because storytelling, telling a good story doesn't matter in which medium it's being told, right? If, if it's a video game, fine. If it's a novel, that's fine too, right? So we have, have colleagues who are really interested in this program, uh, interestingly enough, uh, being engaged in. And we have people from, the, um, from our theater schools, uh, School of Creative and Performing Arts, because you know, setting the stage in a theater and uh, you know, uh, directing and things like this are just same or similar in, in theater and, and in, in video games. So, so we, we're trying to really integrate people, then of course from the Faculty of Arts, uh, bring, bring people in, um, hopefully also engineering when we look at like uh, um, augmented reality, immersive technologies, right? And then it can also go, go in the direction of uh, well, can we build um, specializations? And that's usually, that's what we did with the, in the in the other professional programs. As soon as they start, and we get you know, a lot of momentum, and we have enough students because you need you need a certain number of students to actually make this make this happen. Uh, you can then say, okay, let's look more into into simulation, and, uh, maybe um, in in the medical field or in the engineering field. And uh, now we are with talking to 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 industry applications outside of the, the the game game development industry for example same for for immersive technologies now we can all work with with real estate companies and and, and bring them on board or with engineering companies construction etc right the city of calgary um, uh, richard is is very interested in in artificial intelligence in games right so and there's there's a huge um, effort from a computer science ai perspective to use games as simulators as exploration tools, right, to gather data, to 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 create uh, create more more test data and things like this. So usually interesting areas, and they will be big. They will not never go away. They will just just become bigger because machine learning, of course, is already big with deep learning and AI, and especially in Alberta, is is going to have a and already has a really big momentum. And that just just going to increase. So we are thinking then also in this, these directions, virtual production, of course, right, a lot of the, the big games companies like Epic Games are going into virtual production. And of course, that has really close relations to, to video game production and then bring it to the film industry. And it, it, will, it will change the whole, the whole way of, of how, how we actually build stories, build digital worlds, uh, which is one of the, the, the key themes actually at the University of Calgary, um, digital worlds and you know, digital twins and how to build um, digital representations of the real world and then kind of merge them with. With, with our, our physical world. So there's, there's lots of things that we can do and we hopefully we can do them together because we really want you to be um, partners, partners in crime, so to speak. So let's move this forward together. And that's why we actually are really, really, uh, really appreciate that you're taking the time and let us speak here because we, we're really now interested in and curious about your feedback and what you think. So thank you so far. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen because this is not, not an interesting slide. <laughs> there we go. Awesome. Yeah, so so it will probably not start before twenty twenty three. Um, 
um, because simply because it has to go approval process at the university itself, and it has to actually be presented to the government of Alberta. They have to to look at it and then approve it. That usually takes half a year or so to to go through the whole process. So that's why I'm saying, okay, it's not going to be this year, not this September for sure. Uh, we might do another another test course, but it's not going to be the whole program. Uh, but then as soon as we say, say by the end of the year, we get the go ahead from the government, we would start to to you know, really, really put things in place. So I would think realistically, September 2023, we're going to have that program on the books. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's, that's ambitious. We, we might yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's we have, we have to also, also get the students. Right, the students have to we have to have to do the applications, and we have to go through the applications. So it's 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 quite an involved process, and uh, and just just setting up the infrastructure and really really getting the partners board, and then say okay, how how are we really going to to do it? So yeah, and it gives us the opportunity to uh, gather feedback, you know, from you guys, and uh, take your feedback consideration when this program is finalized. Yeah. And that, that would be a fantastic example to then work on a course module like that, right? Where we say, okay, let's 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 work with you, <laughs> for example, right? You you come in as a as a mentor, as a presenter. Here here is what, what we can work on. And and then maybe bring in some some colleagues from from our our theater theater department. And and say let let let's figure out something. I had a had a master student who was working on virtual theater, uh, so doing you know, using the Hololens and then doing doing stage design and things like this. And that was that was hugely interesting, right? So both from a computer science technology perspective as well as from a from a theater perspective. And we we, we all learned so much. She was actually a lighting designer uh, at the time, and then sort of moved into the into the realm of virtual augmented theater. Uh, and, and a big part of, of the mentorship role is knowing when to bring in the expert uh, so that uh, there's a high value moment. Uh, so it may be that the student says, hey, I really want to focus on whatever. And we will look at that student and say, great, okay, awesome. Here are the things that you need to learn to get to the place where it makes sense to bring in an expert and have them work with you directly. Um, and, and we saw this many, many times uh, where we would bring someone in uh, too soon at EDAC and the students would go, oh, that's really lovely. And they'd get very little from it. And then towards the end of the course, they go, oh, wait a second. <laughs> hmm. Right. And so, so for us, it was the, the, the case of, okay, Let's, you know, as much as you're hungry for that experience, you kind of have to pay your dues and, and learn how to do the things that get you to the place where you can actually work with a master. And because the other part of this is the, the subject matter experts, the, the pros who are, who are bringing in, we're not going to expect that they are excellent at teaching and learning. Their job is not to be a teacher. Their job is to be a powerhouse in the subject matter area that they are uh, an expert in. 
So our job as teachers is to get the student ready to be able to receive that fire hose of input, right? And not just have it blow them away. And so, so you know, our our role as mentors is is to understand students' uh, learning needs better than the students might know it themselves. <laughs> I have to pee. <laughs> I will. Go, go. I'll take over if I hey, must. Steve. Hola. Um, one thing that you mentioned in the presentation that really struck to me because I am a. Uh, alumni from Mount Royal University, and I graduated with a Bachelor of Applied Communications in the field of public relations. What a mouthful, I know. But one of the key elements of that program was the uh, like a workplace, we called it a directed field study. So we actually had two full semesters of paid work experience where we could actually apply um, the stuff that we've learned to our craft being public relations and communication. So working within the master's program, I really think that that tangible benefit of actually being in de game design and working on what your niche will be in the industry um, really benefits it. Um, and what I just wanted to know kind of what was the, what was the motivators behind implementing that into the curriculum or the, the program? The person put it. How, how can how can we say that you, you've got a master's in anything if you can't actually do it? And so you know, our job at that point is is now you've been through the certificate, you've been through the diploma. You don't get to the master's semester unless you've got and you've proven that you've got the the attitude, skills, and knowledge needed for a a diploma level. Right, so you start there, and and by getting people to uh, to say, okay, go and do the work, you 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 are now responsible for your own uh, professional development. You're we're we're going to continue to uh, guide and and help you, but much like what happens at at the um, master's level in uh in sort of the already existing programs um it, th there's a certain degree of of grad students are expected to be autonomous learners right you don't you, you're not spoon fed anything in grad school right? it's a sink or swim kind of of uh world and uh and it, it, you're ready for that when you when you go into grad school you're ready for that experience and so that's what we're doing with the masters is, is it is uh, it is modeling and, and on par with the kind of thinking and, and mindset that, that we expect from graduate students. Thank you. I know because I am one and I'm Correct. going through it myself right now. <laughs> I'm just going to say, well said, Owen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Do any members of the audience have any questions? Unmute. Oh, and there's something in the presentation chat. So, um, so I have a question. Okay, cool. Um, so I work in a different field still in computer science, but I work full time. Um, will it still be able to like combine the two, especially if I want to go towards the master to do the internship and still work a full time position or maybe take a day off from work and do the internship? Would that still be a possibility? Uh, is your full time job related to games? No, I right now I'm a technical lead for uh, mobile development. I see. So in that case, uh, maybe we can work out some sort of special arrangement where you um, 
either work part time for a longer period in order to fulfill the requirement of the uh, industry internship of uh, the masters or something else that we can work out. Right. So this program we are proposing here is designed to be flexible so that if you can't commit full time to the program, you can complete the program in a longer period of time uh, in a, in a part time capacity. OK, that sounds great. Um, and, and, and because uh, so much of what we're, we're trying to do with the program is um, competency based, uh, we, you know, while we say this is a um, uh, an undergraduate degree or equivalent, that equivalent is if you can prove to us, if you've got 10 years in the industry where you've been working on titles as a uh, as a team lead and you're ready to move into uh, the next um, the next phase of your career and you just need that extra help, then there may be a case to be made for that unique circumstance to be accepted as, okay, you don't have uh, an undergrad per se, but you know, you've, you've got enough uh, to be able to hold your own in, in uh, a, a program like the master's. Um, but again, those are things that we have to, um, we can't sort of put that in the literature yet. We, we, we have to kind of take those on a, a case by case basis. Um, but the, the spirit of it uh, has been at all the discussions we've been having is uh, we, we recognize, well, first off, games haven't really had a formal pathway for learning. It's always been, you know, well, I'm doing computer science or I'm doing uh, an art degree and I love games and I'm going to work on games and, and that's my passion. This is one of the first times I've ever seen a full on graduate level master's degree in specifically game production, which is monumental. I, I, you know, it's, it's, I'm so excited to be part of this group because it's, uh, it's not something that I ex ever expected to see happen. So, so this is this is groundbreaking. That's one of the main reasons why when I saw the the this meeting, I I wanted to be a part and to ask questions because I so I don't do game dev um, up until recently. Like I've done mobile development. I'm a self learner. I learned and done things because I'm a giant nerd. <coughs> Sorry, and I'm a giant nerd and just enjoy learning. Um, <coughs> And just a few months ago, I had a some free time and I just decided that let's learn C++ and start doing like 3D graphics. And I just thought it was extremely interesting. And I started searching and I saw nothing concrete about learning how to make an engine, properly how to make an engine or how to you like to actually build the tools yourself and not there are many courses out there about using um, pre-existing engine like Unity, but I'm a giant nerd and I enjoy understanding how the internals of whatever I'm using is actually doing. Um, and so that's why I'm very interested in like this program. Cool. Awesome. Here's hoping the government improves it fast. <laughs> yeah, government and fast. I, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, there have been so actually. Actually, the the speed of governments has has changed, especially regarding regarding these these kinds of programs. Because we, as I, as I said before, we did uh, start a data science program almost four years ago, and for that it took us, I think, nine months to get it approved from the government. Right now, the approval time seems to be between six and eight weeks. Oh wow! So it has has really improved. Yeah, amazing. I if don't know, when, right? <laughs> when I hear government, I always think slow. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's just my assumption. So hopefully I'm wrong about that. But yeah. uh, good to know that it's gotten better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've got uh, a question for you guys. Uh, sorry if this has been covered earlier. I, uh, I joined slightly late, so I'll, I'll definitely watch a replay back. Uh, but how can those of us within the games industry help support you? And what's the best way to get in touch? Well, you can 
email either of us and and we can can set up one-on-one -on -one meetings and then basically figure out what how, how how much you would like to be involved how much or how little you want to be involved i um, mean we always we never never refuse any any help with whether it's setting up the curriculum right uh, helping with mentorship uh, suggesting how this mentorship actually should look like right and uh, and getting getting really good insights from from you right in 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 this it, it's a quite a diverse industry or you know, diff different ways and different studios and and have different different ways of achieving your your outcomes mm -hmm. so so for us learning about that and then f then helping to to integrate it into the into the uh, uh, training environments uh, that would be fantastic and we would also um, uh, establish a sort of a consultancy group so in computer science we have an industry advisory uh, board that we consult uh, several times during the year and say well we like this new course or this new program and we would like to establish something specifically for this for this game production program so if then you know somebody like you can be on that board and and guide and be sort of a consultant as we move forward because it becomes even more important as we move forward right so we, we, we start somewhere but it's built flexibly enough that we can merge it and massage it into into different ways uh, that we might not even think about right, right? definitely sounds good and uh, mm -hmm. i think it's exciting to hear that there's a course like this being developed um mm -hmm. especially to uh create a talent pipeline of, of uh, you know, people that can move into the industry and have the, the necessary skills, both um, both academically, but also the, the practical experience and guidance. Mm -hmm. So great to hear this is happening and more than happy to help out wherever we can. Great, thank you. Hello, uh, I just had like uh, two questions. Um, so, uh, the students coming into this program are probably going to have a very diverse background, right? And some may be coming from an arts background, programming, and uh, many different things. So when they first enter the, uh, I guess, certificate program, how, uh, how may a student with a particular background benefit from, um, I guess, the, the area that is being taught, the same area? So, like, let's say... An art student comes in, right? How do you, uh, how would they benefit from the media design course? When I guess that would be, uh, I guess that course would also be designed to, I guess, accommodate people that would not have that background, right? Well, it, so a big part of it is um, we assess where each learner is at. So mm -hmm. we want to see what they're they're capable of doing. And so if they arrive and say, I want to be a concept artist for uh, games and uh, they're graduating from the computer science program and they've never drawn before, we need to have a long conversation about how we're going to get you to the place where you can start doing concept art. Um, and even those who dabble in uh, or, or have a hobby of, of, of uh, illustration, uh, that's not necessarily going to be enough to get you to the place where you've got the chops to do concept art work. Um, and so, so really, it's it's charting the path from day one of how do, where do you want to be in your career, and then how do we get you there? And we're not going to say don't become uh, a concept artist. We're going to say here's the things you need to do based on your current skill set before you even bother spending any money on on a program uh, an intensive a, a year-long intensive like what we're offering you know you you have to kind of have to be it would be unethical for me if i was uh, a trainer at a gym and i had somebody walk in and, and say i want to run a marathon in five weeks and I, I my first question would be so how far can you run right now mm -hmm. well i can run to the end of the block i'm like uh ah, yeah five weeks isn't enough time for me to get you to run a marathon uh you're gonna have to do some stuff to be able to re be ready for training you for that experience so that when you show up and we all we have five weeks left before you run a marathon then i can actually help you right uh so so really this is isn't just sort of uh um uh, hey, come one, come all, we're going to take you from zero to 100. Uh, it, we we, we want to make sure that we're doing right by our students 
on day one and saying, okay, here's, here's what we can do for you, given the amount of time that we have together. Awesome. That makes sense. Uh, so, yeah, I, I guess it'd be like a, a pretty personalized, right? That's the idea. It has to be. It has yeah, to be. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's, it's, the, uh, it, it's not to take anybody's dreams away, but it's, it's more the acknowledgement of the, the depth and breadth of the games industry. Uh, and, and, and how do you take what you can do and turn it into something that is uh, transferable to the games environment? Uh, I was at the, uh, the next conference, uh, the, the uh, augmented or the VR conference, uh, the metaverse, um, the future of the metaverse conference uh, that um, uh, Lethbridge College put on. And uh, this guy, Matt, I think I forget his name. Anyways, um, he was a presenter, and uh, and he's currently working at Ubisoft uh, in Quebec, um, and he's a history prof. He was he was actually at the University of Lethbridge uh, teaching uh, history, and uh, and Ubisoft hired him to be a historian who works on uh, assessing and looking at the, the the work that they're doing on, I believe it's Assassin's Creed, um, and, uh, and figuring out, so uh, where is the historical accuracy and what are the things we need to do to sort of find a balance between gameplay and, and suspension of disbelief and storytelling and the sort of historical aspects uh, and one example he used it was really interesting was um the fact that uh the historically accurate notre dame in paris uh doesn't look anything like what's in the game because back in the day they didn't have that iconic spire but nobody recognized the notre dame uh because it, it was missing its iconic spire uh and so so that was sort of an interesting moment of oh okay this is this is how someone who comes from a history background finds their way into the games industry and uh, and so so this is the kind of and and i know game studios are are interested in finding those people right and finding those those unique uh, uh contributions to the team and depending on the size of team that you have, of course, right? It's um, Ubisoft is kind of a big company, um, so so yeah, it's 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 an interesting um, when we look at our 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 learners and and who's coming to us, we, we want to say, okay, what what have you got, and how can we help you get where you want to go? Yeah, I guess um, I had another question. Is there uh, do you guys have an idea of what the other faculty's involvement would be in this program? Is that, or is that a kind of something that is being figured out? Well, we we do know. Let, let me ask first, and then Richard can also also add. Uh, so, so we have reached out to a particular who have expressed interest right from the beginning, or that we, that we got on board. So we have, so we know these colleagues and. Uh, then it's it's basically a matter of um, getting their teaching time released from from their departments, uh, right? And usually uh, that 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 can be arranged. And but we have we have identified specific individuals, to get us started, and then hopefully we can you know, as the program grows add, add more faculty members. And then of course word gets around. Are you interested? And then hopefully we get more faculty members. But but we have we have a group of of colleagues that are already interested. In that. Hmm. Thank you. Um, do is there any um, plan or something you're talking about in regards to music or like a sound design, especially world design and all of that in other regards? Yeah, sound is so certainly uh, sound of music. So certainly there are, there are be courses in this program that are focused on that aspect. Very cool. Yeah, a good friend of mine is uh, Dave Chan, and, and he, uh, uh, he has a quite an extensive portfolio of uh, all types of games. He worked for Bioware for a number of years, and, and he also worked on um, uh, Hinterlands, The Lost Dark. Uh, and, and so he, he's 
continually speaking in my ear about, hey, yeah, don't forget about audio. Um, and so definitely uh, audio is, is, is an important key, key component of, of, uh, of making games at every level. Cool. Thank you very much. We actually have a faculty member in computer science who's looking at spatial audio and has been doing that for, mm -hmm. for a few years, Jeff Boyd. And he's been working with a faculty member in the department, Frida Mansalis, who is now retired, but they still keep, keep working. And they did a lot in, in spatial audio. And uh, um, then there were other connections to the music department uh, who look into synthesizers and sound generation. And, so, yep, there are some, some really cool connections. There's a lot, lot, of, lot of expertise on, on campus, and it's, uh, it's great to then help them help the, you use that expertise in, in, in for, for interesting programs like game production, right? Which they, so for applications that they, they never had in mind. Really. <laughs> Sometimes we surprise our colleagues and say, hey, have you ever thought about a game production program? <laughs> And so you're getting involved. I think we're getting to the end of, of questions. And uh, for anybody who, oh, sorry. Oh, you got, okay. Cool. Uh, as a follow-up, uh, I put the uh, email addresses for Christian, Richard, and myself in the chat uh, uh, on the, uh, the channel. Um, as well, you'll see our email addresses on the, the presentation if you go back and, and watch again. Um, it's in, in the slide deck there. Uh, and if you have any questions or, or thoughts, feedback, uh, recommendations, uh, <laughs> You got a crystal ball, and you can tell us about the future. Uh, we're we're all ears. You know, we we are very eager to uh, stay well connected and integrated with the uh, the community here. Absolutely, and in the short term, we are very happy to have one on ones with, with each of you. So just just reach out. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Yes. Thanks, Thanks for having us. For hosting us. Yes. Thank you. Have a good night, folks. Okay. Good evening. Have a good evening. <laughs>